okay uh, welcome back to uh, to the third part people and uh, let me bring in a couple of more rules inside the opening and the closing style tags give me a sec okay so after the header uh, I'm gonna insert these two rules okay now this is gonna these two rules are gonna apply to the nav tag the nav tags are out here down below you know here this is where the nav tag uh, opens this is where it actually closes this is new to HTML5 and let's see what the rules actually say a width of 100% cool that means it's gonna flush the entire width available to it text align center so the uh, text uh, will be centered on the page self-explanatory and the allies inside the nav so these allies okay how should they behave list style none so list style type none you you can say list style none too that's shorthand okay display inline block so instead of being a block level element should should act like a inline block that's gonna make them adjacent as we'll soon see and a line height Okay. Uh, controls the line spacing of a 50px so let's see the changes now let's save the document up let's bring the browser up and let's reload you see inline block in the same line now adjacent not top and bottom but left and right uh, structure or pattern <coughs> notice that the width is a uh, hundred percent and text align center you see it's all centered up whatever width you actually give it's gonna center uh, up itself very, very cool okay at this point I'm gonna bring in one more rule and we'll discuss that okay how should the anchor tab uh, uh, tags behave inside the navs as you can see we have anchor tags inside the nav how should they behave it's a descendant rule people padding 10% so that's spacing out some color could have been a different color too text decoration none that's gonna remove the underline which is the default behavior for any link uh, item that's gonna remove the underline font size well it could have been a different value 14 is a professional uh, way of working border left solid 1px some color and transition of the box shadow uh, in 0.3 seconds <clears throat> now the transition is something that we're going to discuss a little later let's see the other changes or the other properties how does it actually affect the document so let's uh, reload and you see the borders actually appear out here before every item okay I don't want this border out here nor do I want it out here it's definitely not gonna appear out here simply because border left so how do I uh, you know remove the first one for the first item what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert an inline style and I'm gonna say border dash left none ideally uh, you know it's not uh, a great idea to always use uh, inline styles but it's okay to sometimes use it alright so save and let's reload and you see the border out here just disappears and this is the way I wanted things to be cool let's get in one more rule let's format our document further <coughs> people uh, just to uh, you know work a little quicker I'm copying and pasting I'm also you uh, you know using opening closing style text but ideally use a external style sheet that's the right way of working okay so this rule says all anchor tags when hovered upon should throw up um, some shadow and uh, x displacement should be zero y displacement should be zero the spread value uh, sorry the blur value should be 15 and the spread value should be 5 the color should be this and uh, it should be inset going inside let's uh, save the document up on second thoughts let me just change this rule to a different rule like so okay so um, x displacement 0 y displacement 0 blur value 15 
spread of a 5px uh, corn silk is the color okay and should be inset at the same time I would want the text color to be a wheat let's see how this actually affects uh, the web page now let me bring up the web page let's refresh let's reload okay see the uh, mild hover effect actually appear now this is going to become more prominent as I create a uh, few more rules alrighty let's get in the next rule then okay so let me insert it out here in line number 31 now this controls the menu a width of 100 px let's see where the menu is actually <coughs> you see the nav has a class of menu it's an important rule which I probably should have created earlier okay let's discuss this rule a width of 100% a height of 50 px uh, a background color is gonna be a linear gradient okay going from this value or this color to this color position we are setting it to absolute once you set the position property uh, of an element to absolute then you can use the top left right and bottom values and even the z index <coughs> okay through the z index I'm tucking it behind something minus one and some transition transition for the top over 0.3s yes. now this is gonna become clear a little later why we need the transition okay so at this point let me save the document up and let's see the effect this rule actually has Oh, everything just disappears. Uh, never mind. Uh, things should uh, start taking place very soon, and we'll see why it actually disappeared. Probably because of the index. I think. Let me for a minute. Let's see if I were to keep it as one and bring the browser up. And there may be some other reason which we'll explore in a minute. okay uh, the reason is out here a top minus 50 you see if I momentarily change this to a 50 minus 50 means it's actually going up and hiding itself let's save it up let's uh, bring the browser up and let's reload you see it appears uh, out here right now and this is the way the hover effect actually shows through okay so let me revert back to minus 50 minus 50 is gonna is gonna tuck itself outside the page from, you know it goes out of the top of the page this is the way it's actually acting out cool okay people uh, let me get in the next rule dot menu icon rule okay let's push in the rule out here and even before I discuss the rule let's see where the menu icon is the menu icon is the class that's been attached to the label for the checkbox which has an ID of menu toggle there okay and let's see what the rule actually does floats it on the right hand side instead of the left hand side padding uh, it adds some padding top uh, bottom left and right some color some background some border radius some margin uh, so along with the some padding some margin too changes the cursor property to a pointer and Z index is gonna push it in the front display in you don't need this plain line block actually just let's remove this property okay let's save the things up and let's bring the browser up and let's reload okay the menu obviously has gonna tucked itself outside the page gonna it's gone out of uh, you know out of the roof actually you know this is uh, the menu icon has ensured that this icon appears is been is been floated right people it has been floated right all right and uh, <coughs> let's get in one more rule now this is simple when the menu icon is hovered upon change the color okay so let's reload and when you hover over the menu icon see the color change Sub, you know subtle increase in brightness okay let's get in the uh, 
next few rules. Now these are very important rules, people. Okay, I'm gonna throw them in out here. See, you as you can see, there are so many rules, people, and uh, that's exactly the reason why I'm uh, actually copying and pasting instead of typing. But actually, I can focus more on what I'm saying and uh, makes things a little snappy. Menu toggle, menu toggle, menu toggle, and menu toggle in the checked state. This is the sibling selector, people. Okay, we'll talk about what a sibling. You know, sibling is a sibling. It's not a child. It's a sibling, right? So let's see where the menu toggle exactly is and why are we setting the display of the menu toggle to a none basically to make it disappear let's bring the browser up okay let's see where the menu toggle is input type checkbox id menu toggle okay we wanna hide the checkbox we don't want the checkbox all we need is the menu icon or the label we don't want this part we don't want line 66 but we want just line 67 to appear so we are making menu toggle disappear out here using the display property setting it to none but I'm saying when the menu toggle is in the checked position see when you uh, some at you know half the time it will be in the checked position and at times it will not be in the checked position <coughs> depending on whether it was actually clicked or not but when it's in the checked position the sibling menu make sure that you set the position for the menu to be absolute and should drop in from the top which was minus 50 now should be 50 in the checked position so when you check the menu toggle the menu should drop in from the top and from a minus 50 should come down to a 50 okay at the same time in the menu toggle checked position the rule should have a background color of transparent let me show that to you uh, the rule where's the rule the rule has a background color where we actually use three colors olive teal sky blue I would want all the three colors to be rendered transparent so basically I don't want the horizontal rule to appear at all when the menu drops down from the top <coughs> you see the menu up front was set to hide itself go through the roof of the page and hide itself it's actually thrown outside the bounds of the or the boundaries of the page or the web page it's it's hidden itself from the roof it's gone through the roof and hidden itself but when <coughs> the menu toggle or the checkbox is in the checked state at that time the rule should hide itself by rendering the background transparent and the position of the menu uh, should be absolute and drop in from the top by so many pixels so from a minus 50 to a 50 also when the menu toggle is in the checked position the content now where's the content I haven't placed the content yet let me bring in the content give me a second people content is basically uh, some text let me do a quick copy paste here again okay paste so a division with the class of content you know an h2 element out here after that and a paragraph so spacer is basically adding the extra padding here and here a div with the class of content content is nothing but some text some text filler people so just uh, let's save the this is lorem ipsum text filler let's bring the browser up and let's see the different changes let's re let's see this disappear okay let's say a reload it re you know everything just disappears now even if I click here people that's uh, even though you can't see the checkbox the checkbox box actually ch gets checked on the display state is set to an off you know uh, is, 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 uh, um, set to a none display property set to a none you can't see it but it's checking on and checking off so that toggle of the checkbox is going on all the time and when you ch you know check it on you see it actually drops down from the top see the transition actually happening over 0.4 seconds okay so you see the slide up and down behavior <coughs> very, very cool but you see 
we still don't have the um, you know the uh, the rules for the or the media queries for the tablet the smartphone size so let's get that uh, let's bring that in two and you know give it a finishing touch so at this point uh, I'm gonna save the document up I'm gonna terminate this part and I'm sure you'll join me in the won't you surely you'll join me in the the next part in the concluding part the final part of this tutorial where I show you how to include the media queries so once you uh, you know your browser is uh, down to 480px or lower than that you'll get a different behavior of the menu bar so see you there bye bye